Well, hello there, and welcome to another episode of Needlepoint TV. I'm Ellen Johnson, and I'm your host, and I'm delighted to have you here with me this afternoon. Now, if you're joining me live, you know that this is Friday, April the 23rd, which is a couple of days after when we typically do go live. If you're watching this as a recording, um, I'm delighted to have you here with me and watching it as a recording too. It's always great fun for me to know who's here with me, so please make sure and say hello, uh, type in where you're watching from so I can see who's with me and where you are in this great, big, wonderful world that we all live in. And I'm going to, let me check over here, get my comments fixed so that I can see. Um, I see that we do have several people here and there we go. So yes, I know you can hear me and see me okay if you have responded to tell me where you're watching from. So that's great. So we got Julian Omaha and... I know that there are other people here too, Terry from Colorado. So great. All right. So today, what we're going to talk about is silk thread. Silk thread is one of my all time favorites. In fact, I would go so far as to say it is my favorite thread to work with. Um, I learned how to do needlepoint using wool. I don't know about you, but years and years, and we won't talk about <clears throat> how many years ago it was, I learned how to do needlepoint on a pre-worked needlepoint canvas where the design was already stitched and all I had to do was fill in the background. Now, if you've ever worked one of those, I would love to know that too. So be sure and tell me about that as well. Um, mine was a, a, actually a canvas that had violets on it and I filled in the background. I don't remember what color I used but my grandmother took me to the needlework department of Gafer's department store at Edgewater Mall in Biloxi, Mississippi when I was nine years old. And I will never forget that because afterwards she took me to the Copper Kettle, which was the restaurant that was inside of Gafer's at that time. So anyway, big day for me. I graduated from pre uh, from stamped rather stamped uh, embroidery cross stitch with the little cross stitches and French knots and lazy daisy stitches pillowcases to needlepoint. I thought I had hit high cotton at that point. So anyway, uh, that was a, a memory that I'll always have and treasure. Have no idea where that canvas is now. Um, I asked my mom about it. She couldn't remember it, but it, it could be packed away someplace. But um, I do have the very first piece that my grandmother ever stitched for me. And it's a kitty cat. It was my kitty cat. I had a Siamese cat named Wendy and she stitched it uh, for me and gave it to me when I was a little girl. And I'll have to share that with y'all sometime. I love my my kitty. I've still got it in the frame that she framed it in herself. Don't know where she got the frame, but but she did that for me. And um, ironically, the background that she chose to stitch that kitty cat in is my favorite color today. So, but anyway, I digress. Let's get back to the silk threads. So when I first discovered silk thread, um, yeah, I was just enamored with it because it's so soft. The colors are so rich and so luscious that, you know, it was just like choirs of angels singing when I first first discovered it. So what I thought we'd do here today is chat a little bit about several of the silk threads that I've used in the past, but then also um, would love to know from you what's your favorite silk thread too. So as you're thinking about this, as you're listening, make sure that you, um, you know, share that with me too. So let me look and see. Um, I'm going to, I want to read some of the comments as we go through, because it's always great fun for me to see. And I want to make sure that if anybody has any questions that I get those answered for you as well. So if you do have a question for those of you that have been following me for a while, you know that it's always very helpful for you to type your questions in all capital letters, because that makes it easier for me to find those. And again, if you're watching this as a recording, make sure that you feel free to ask, ask your questions and, and type them in all caps too, so that I can get your questions answered to. So I see we have somebody watching from a hotel room in Dallas, Texas. Oh dear. I am so sorry. Oh goodness gracious. Mm, we have somebody that had a fire that destroyed a part of their stash. I am so sorry. Sending lots of love to you. I, I'm, I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, so we have, let's see, in addition to Oh, somebody says they found, they love silk thread. I have found running 
let's see, running it through a flat iron reserve just for threads makes the kinks come out nicely. What a great tip. That is a really good um, thing to remember because, and, and I'll try to remember to share that again um, when we start talking about some of the threads from Rainbow Gallery, because many of their, well, all of their threads are on cards and sometimes they get those little folds or kinks in them. So great tip there. Thank you for sharing that. All right, let's see. Um, all right. Yes, Lois, you're right. High cotton <laughs> is a true Southern expression. You are right about that. All right. Silk and ivory is actually, Lisa asked um, if I'm talking about silk and ivory. Silk and ivory is actually a blended thread. It's a 50% merino wool and 50% silk. So it's not pure silk, but it is another really terrific thread. And I love working with it too, but great question there. Um, okay. So, um, we've got our most silk threads from China or are there other countries that produce it? I love this question. So um, a lot of silk threads do come from the Orient, from China and Japan, but there's also a really big um, manufacturing of silk threads in France. In fact, let's just go ahead and talk about Splendor. Splendor right here, Rainbow Gallery, thread on a card, has those kinks in it when you take it off the card. So what you do is you, you open the thread up and it's got those little folds in it. You can see that. If you have a flat iron that you use on your hair, um, you can put it on. I would start with the lowest setting, the lowest heat setting, and you can run threads through that flat iron and it'll straighten them out so that they don't have those little kinks in them. Let's see, get it over here so you can see it. So, that's one really good tip um, and that works on other kinds of threads too. It's not just silk thread. It will definitely work on some of your novelty threads. Like for example, I just happen to have a card of flare here beside me. So flare is, is another rainbow gallery thread and you can see, well, let's see, let's get it over. Well, I don't know. You can see the folds in it. Some probably going to be easier to see if I fold it off a little bit more. Um, you can see the folds in it. And that happens because these threads stay wrapped around the cards for extended periods of time. And they just naturally take on the, the, um, you know, the, the shape that they're wrapped around. So, but back to our silk thread. So Splendor, this is a strandable silk thread. So when I say strandable or, or divisible, um, that means that there are multiple strands. I'm going to pull off several um, inches of it. There are several strands that are put together to create one, one big strand. So when you tap the end, this is one of my favorite tricks to share with people. When you tap the end of Splendor, it blooms out. And what the way Splendor is constructed, let me see if I can do this a little bit more and get it to really show. Um, Splendor is 12 strands of silk thread twisted together to create this one big strand. It's divisible. You can use it as just a single strand or you can use all 12 strands on your piece, depending on what size mesh canvas you're working with. So now let me make sure that I'm not missing any questions. All right. Yeah. So um, we've got, uh, and I, I know I'm going to butcher your name, so I don't even want to say it. It's either Caps or Capis, um, is said she always irons her threads. And I, I like to work with my threads. Um, I like for them to be smooth when I work with them. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to bite the bullet and cut this. So I like to work with pieces that are not terribly long. And the reason I do that is so that um, it makes it much more manageable, to, the thread much more manageable to work with. So I'm going to cut this piece about 16 inches long. And so now I've got two ends that are um, available for me to play with. So I'm going to just tap that. And what happens is this is going to divide and I have to get it close to me so I can see um, what's happening here. But I, it's going to divide this up, this big strand. Here we go. Going to get this big strand divided up into three bundles. And I'll show you this here. Let me get it so you can see it. I'm going to split them apart, but three bundles of four strands each. So if you're going to divide um, a strand of Splendor like this, what I usually do is I'll pull out one of those bundles slowly and then 
I have my bundle of four. And this is true when you're working with any stranded thread um, or divisible thread. You always want to take those strands apart and then put them back together in your needle. That's called stranding. So when you take it, when you take out one strand at a time, you're just going to pull one little strand out and lay it down on the table. And then you're going to pull out a second strand slowly, slowly, because you don't want it to get tangled and then pull out a third, that third strand. And just you, you do that until you have as many strands as you want to be working with. I usually work with um, four strands for full coverage on 18 count canvas and anywhere from six to seven, sometimes eight, depends on the on the thread um, on 13 mesh canvas. So you put those strands back together you thread them into the eye of your needle and then you take off and start stitching. So that um, that is one strandable thread or one divisible thread. Um, let's see. Let me see if anybody else has posted questions. I'm, I'm going to keep checking periodically um, because I want I don't want to miss anything. So another divisible thread or strandable silk thread that I really like to work with. I've got several here. So let me see. And these are actually from a project that I just finished teaching not too long ago. I just happen to have this bag handy here and I, that's why I grabbed it. So we'll talk about some of these. Let's see. Okay, wait, this bag has got a lot. All right, here we go. Another strandable thread is Planet Earth Six Ply. Nothing like good old Ziploc bags, right? Um, so Planet Earth Six Ply and this is obviously, well, I got to get this. Oh, well, for those of you that wonder how I store my threads, I store my threads in floss away bags. I really love these because you can write the color number on it and you can see what's in there. So um, just a little aside there. But Planet Earth Six Ply is, as the name suggests, it's six individual strands. Each one of these is is made up of six individual strands. So if you just tap the end, they'll sort of bloom out or flower out. And then you can cut your piece 16 to 18 inches long. And then you pull out each individual strand, put them back together, and then however many you need, and then take off and start working on your project. So Planet Earth Silk, it's Planet Earth Six Ply. Um, it's a nice thread to work with too. Um, let's see some, uh, my other one that I'm looking for is Soi Delge. That one is, and, and I'm, I'm going to have to get in this little bag right here. So Soi Delge is a really, really pretty thread. Um, that's a different one. So it is made in France. I know you were asking about, and actually Splendor is made in France too. Um, just as an aside there. So this is, this is Soi Delge. Yeah, this is Soi Delge. Now I've already wound this into a little ball instead of this. And this is just a little something that I do. I'm not advocating that you do this. Um, but I, whenever I get a skein of thread and, and for those of you that are newer to doing needlepoint, there is a difference between a skein and a hank. So let's do a little bit of um, let me reach down here. Let's do a little bit of, um, I don't know, dictionary definitions or whatever. So this is a skein. A skein is a twist like this, and it's small. A hank is bigger. And I don't have a hank of, of anything handy that I can just reach over and grab. But just know that a skein is smaller than a hank. So a hank would be considerably larger than this. Um, so Soi Delge comes in a skein and their skeins are, I wish I had, do I have one? I don't think I, I don't think I do. I'll have to, um, Hmm, hmm, hmm. Maybe we can do a Facebook post this week about Soi Delge and show you what a skein of Soi Delge looks like because I just don't have one that hasn't been cut yet. But anyway, Soi Delge, when you separate or when you when you get ready to work with it, let me get that off. Um, it is, and this is really interesting. It's wait, this is another piece that I had cut off. So it is seven strands. So there are seven individual strands that make up 
you know, these big strands like this. And then when you were working with Splendor, that's made out of, it has 12. Um, it's Planet Earth 6 ply has six. So there's really, um, it depends on the manufacturer. Sometimes you get a skein of thread or uh, some, some divisible thread, uh, strandable thread that you, you have 12 strands that you're working with. Sometimes you have seven, sometimes you have six. Um, I'm trying to think if there's one where you have eight. I can't think of one off the top of my head right now. But anyway, Soie d'Alger comes in a huge array of colors. Lovely, lovely thread. There isn't very much in a skein, though, um, in their small skeins that they have. Um, so if you're going to be using that thread, then, um, you know, you're you're probably going to use more of Soie d'Alger than, than, or you're going to have to have more skeins. So now let me see if we have any questions. Yep. We've got several people who have said that they like to iron their threads. So let me go back. All right. Nope. No, wait a minute. Okay. So look, we have somebody who said that their first stitched piece was a kitty cat too. Um, yep. Said that she, uh, she says, or he says, I can't tell because it, it just doesn't have a name there, but it's a used thread that, that when you brushed it with the bunka brush, it made it look like fur. So that's something that we'll talk about for another episode of Needlepoint TV is some of those threads that you can use to mimic animal fur. But getting back to our topic of on hand today um, about si uh, silk thread. Um, all right. So let's see. Um, so we have a question that has popped up here since I scroll down. Um, for what types of projects and stitches would you use Valdani silk floss? So you can use really all of the silk threads interchangeably. Now there is a difference between the two different kinds. Okay, so really, let me back up. So there are two kinds of silk thread. There's divisible silk thread, which is your strandable silks like Splendor, Soie d'Alger, Soie Cristal, which is... Um, okay, so I, this one is also one that I used on a recent project, so I don't have it in the skein, I don't think, not with me handy, but it comes, the tag looks like this. So this is a, it, it's a divisible thread. It's 12 strands as well. So those kinds of threads are um, your strandable threads or your divisible threads, and then you have your single strand silks. And a, an example of a single strand silk is Planet Earth silk just plain old planet earth silk now i do have I have several of these um i just finished not too long ago stitching a project for rebecca um it was that really cute thorn alexander um champagne the i view you more than bubbles so i just finished it and sent it off to the finisher uh, but this is what planet earth silk looks like and this is really good for 13 count canvas as a matter of fact this is probably my all-time favorite single strand silk thread. And I say single, it may be the only, come to think of it, if, if it's not the only, it's one of the few that you can use just one strand on 13 mesh canvas and get full coverage. So um, it's a heavier weight thread and the colors are really, really pretty. They're, they're very, very rich. And um, so it's like I said, it's one of it's one of my favorites, um, especially for 13 count when I'm trying to get full coverage. Um, there are other single strand threads that you use um, where you when I say single strand, you just use one strand to get full coverage. Um, and when I say full coverage, that means that if you're working in tent stitch, which is either the continental variation of tent stitch or basket weave. Um, then to get full coverage, that means that the thread, when you stitch in that stitch, is going to cover all of the canvas. No painted design is going to show through. So if you're trying to achieve that effect where you get full coverage, then um, Planet Earth Silk is good for 13 count. Um, a couple of options for 18 count would be, uh, well, a couple of options are uh, Planet wait a minute, excuse me, pepper pot silk, also from Planet Earth Fibers. So pepper pot silk and vineyard silk is a single strand silk thread that's also quite nice for um, 18 count canvas. So now I know, let's see, projects and stitches for Valdani silk floss. So um, several things you can do with the Val Valdani, just like you can do with Splendor, just like you can do with Soie d'Alger, Water Lilies, a lot, all of the strandable silk threads. Um, you can use 
those threads for really any kind of project, the places I would caution you about using them would be on pieces that are going to get a lot of wear. Even though silk is a very strong fiber, it it's, it's a little bit more prone to snagging. So here's one of those things that I would take into consideration when using this, when choosing stitches. I would keep the stitch length shorter when using a stranded silk thread. So in other words, if I'm going to work a decorative stitch, I probably would not work a, 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 a decorative stitch using stranded silk over more than four canvas threads. Anything longer than that is, is going to have more of a tendency to snag and get caught on things. So um, that's why I tend to keep my stitches shorter. Now, if you're doing, a, and this is where keeping the end in mind, in other words, thinking about about how you're going to use the, the stitched piece when you're finished with it um, makes a huge difference in your thread choice and in your stitch selection. So if you're going to be doing a piece that's going to be framed, that, that rule of thumb obviously wouldn't apply because it's not going to be something that is going to get a lot of handling. But if you're doing a pillow uh, that's going to be on a sofa or in a chair where people could be leaning up against it or you know brushing up against it, you know how jewelry can catch on things. Um, you definitely want to make sure that if you're doing a pillow, then you do want to keep your stitches shorter and you do want to use threads that are going to be more durable. So that being said, you can definitely use stranded silks on Christmas ornaments because those don't have a tendency to get handled very much. Stand-ups that are going to be, um, you know, in a place where children are not going to be handling them a lot. I know these things are so tempting for little ones and they're so pretty with all their texture and sparkle and uh, they're just, they're just like eye candy. And so, um, you know, it, it's tempting for little ones. And, and if you're going to be doing things that children are going to be handling, then I would say steer away from using stranded silks with longer stitches. Um, now, all of these threads, with the exception of the novelty threads, each one of the novelty threads is going to behave a little differently if you have to do some spot cleaning. But silk, wool, cotton, linen, all of your natural fiber threads are going to be able to be spot cleaned, which is probably another subject for another episode of Needlepoint TV. But um, but just know that uh, you can do some, some gentle spot cleaning on all of these threads. Um, so some examples of other places, uh, stitches that I might use. Again, um, you can do longer stitches, stitches that cover more canvas threads with your stranded silks if you're going to be doing something that's not going to be handled a lot. So I hope that answers the question. Um, if you have more questions, I'll be happy to, um, to, to help. And now I see... <laughs> Somebody said Trebizon, not Baldoni. Okay, so so totally different. And I'm glad that you that you clarified that. So Trebizon is a single strand. Trebizon can it's a twisted thread. It's like a pearl, a twisted pearl. Um, and so Trebizon is, and it's actually the thread that we have as our featured thread this month inside the Stitchers Club. And I'm trying to think where is this? I don't did I? I think I didn't grab one of those. I didn't. So anyway, it comes on a spool and it's the if you look at the Serendipity Needleworks website this week, I just posted a blog post about silk thread and the picture at the top is a picture of Trebizond. So Trebizond looks very much like pearl cotton. Um, it's got that same twist. And so some ways that you can use Trebizond, um, actually, an interesting thing about Trebizond, it's divisible too. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put up the red flag. If I had one, I need one. So we'll put up the, the <laughs> we'll pretend like this is a red flag. If you are new to using, um, or new to needlepoint, newer to needlepoint, please don't try to divide Trebizond and, and work with it because unless you're a very accomplished embroiderer, um, because working with Trebizond, when you divide it, what happens is because it's been twisted together so tightly, it looks very crimped when you take it apart. And um, it's a filament silk. So there's a difference between uh, filament silk and spun silk. 
Most of the threads that we use in needlepoint are spun silk. They're short fibers. And I have a, a blog post on the Serendipity Needleworks website about that too. And I'll be sure and link to both of those articles, the one about the different kinds of um, silk thread, like the differences between filament silk and spun silk, as well as, the, as well as the article that goes with this episode of Needlepoint TV that got posted today. So, but the thing about filament silk is that it is well the sh the the short answer to this is filament silk is the actual fiber that gets unwound from a cocoon of a silkworm so it's long um staple fiber long staple silk fibers and it is then twisted together and to create that that thread trebizond and so the the trebizond is any place that you want to use um, a, a, that you could use a pearl cotton. You can also use a silk pearl like Trebizond. Um, there's also a thread called Swa Pearl A from the people at um, Swa, no, from Avera Swa. That's the company. I get the names mixed up. So Avera Swa is the company that makes Swa Dalje, which is a stranded silk thread. They also make one called Swa Pearl A. And it's a tightly twisted silk thread as well. Comes in the cutest little spools too. Um, you can get it in different sizes, of course, but um, it, it comes in the in the larger um plastic spools that have the snap cap, but then you can also get it on these really cute little wooden spools. Um, I'll have to share a picture of both of those too. But um, but anyway, you can use those threads um, just like you would pearl cotton. Um, they're tightly twisted. Trebizond is tightly twisted, but you can divide it. And if you divide it, then you're going to treat it like a stranded silk. So you're going to use it with a laying tool. You don't have to use any single strand silks with a laying tool, but anytime you're working with a multiple strands in your needle, you're going to want to use a laying tool. So this is probably way more than you ever wanted to know. <laughs> but um, all right, so here we go. Um, Okay, so this is wondering about Trebizond is so beautiful, but I'm not sure what to stitch with it. So again, so you can use Trebizond on Christmas ornaments. You can use it on uh, pillows. You can use it on framed pieces, stand ups. Uh, you could even use it if you've seen those um, needlepoint cuff bracelets. There are several designers that do cuff bracelets. Melissa Shirley had a line of those several years ago, and I'm not sure that she still has them, but uh, there are other designers that have started doing those too. So basically, it's just like a wide cuff bracelet that you put, you know, and just, you just wear it like a, um, well, it's a cuff bracelet. Uh, they also, you can also use that for headbands. Um, there are needlepoint headbands. And I'm trying to think what else could you, watch bands. You could use it for, use that for watch bands. Um, Trebizond's, it's a very sturdy thread because it is that tight twist. Um, you, if you wanted to do a silk belt, you could do that. It would be pretty if you chose to use it on, um, uh, if you wanted to do a, a belt that you made into a tray. Uh, there's several uh, finishing options or opportunities for you to use belts as um, for for bag um, straps, uh, for camera straps, for guitar straps. So all of those things, you could use it for that. Um, now, I will say this. If you're going to use Trebizond as a single strand and you're going to use it on your needlepoint 18 mesh canvases, which is the size canvas you're going to want to use it on, you're going to find that the canvas does show through a little bit. The painted canvas does show through a little bit. At least I found that to be true. Now, um, so that all that to say, when you stitch with it in basket weave or with just the continental variation of tent stitch, then, uh, you know, if you've got, if you've matched the color of thread to the paint on the canvas, well, it, you're not going to notice it. Because it is, it's almost, it almost covers it completely, but just not quite. Um, if you do decide that you want to try it and, and divide it, you can get full coverage if you, if you divide it into those three, um, into those three pieces, three, actually it's a ply because it's twisted together. So a ply, you ply, when, when threads are made to be non-divisible, then you consider the pieces that are twisted together apply. Um, and, and in this case, actually, I have to say, you can take those three plies and, and divide them down even more until you get down to the single filament of 
silk fiber that the the whole thing is twisted together to make so anyway that is um that's kind of a lowdown on Trebizond. Um, again, Soie Perle is another um, single strand filament silk that you can use. Um, and it's a so Trebizond and Soie Perle are single strand filament silks, which tend to have a higher sheen out than the spun silk. And then some spun silk single strand threads would be um, Pepper Pot, Planet Earth Silk. Um, let's see, uh, pepper pot planted, vineyard silk. Um, and then there's some other novelty to, well, I won't say novelty, some other companies that do multicolored options. I know Gloriana has one. I can't remember the name of it. Gum nuts has one. So there are a lot of different smaller companies that have, oh, 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 another single strand that you can use from Rainbow Gallery. Grandeur and Elegance are both single strand silks and you can, they're dyed to match Splendor. So if you're using um, Splendor on a project and you also want to have a, a single strand or a twisted pearl type uh, thread, you can match the Splendor to, in many cases, to a shade of, um, of either grandeur or elegance. Um, and those are, I can't remember which is which right now, but they're, they're equitable to a size five pearl cotton or an eight pearl cotton. So they're smaller. They would be used for, for um, maybe accent stitches uh, or the accent part of a decorative stitch. So, but they're really pretty threads too. All right. So would Trebizond have better coverage on Congress cloth? So I think what you would have to do on that, it's been a long time since I've stitched on Congress cloth. It might be a hair too big when you use it by itself on Congress cloth because Congress cloth is, is the, the holes are teeny, teeny, tiny. So you might have to divide it if you wanted to use it on Congress cloth. Um, but I, I would just say play around with it. Um, if you have some Trebizond, if let me just say this too. If you have Trebizond um, in your stash, get it out and play around with it some. If you don't have it in your stash, see if you can get your hands on a spool of it because it really is a neat thread um, and it can be used for light coverage on 18 count canvas. If you're trying to do like a layered stitch, many, many times when you want to do a, sti a decorative stitch, and we actually ran into this, we had this conversation the other night on Stitchers Club Canvas Call. Somebody was working on um, use, they were using a thread for the diagonal knitting stitch and they were having a hard time getting the stitches to like, they couldn't see where to go. And, and part of the problem was that the thread was, was a thicker thread. It was going to one that would give you full coverage on 18 mesh canvas. Many times when you've got stitches that are sharing holes, uh, you want to use a thread that's a little bit thinner than what you typically would to get full coverage because that's going to make it easier to see what you're doing. Um, and so in that case, see Trebizond would be a, a good choice. Um, and I saw something move. We just had, um, okay. All right. So I, I thought there was a question that popped up. So um, to recap, because I just looked at the clock too, and we are already at 30 minutes. Holy cow. Where does the time go when you're having fun? Um, but we have, um, I want to show you some, some examples of the different kinds of threads and just recap really quickly what we've gone over and do encourage, I do encourage you to make sure that you check out this week's blog post about silk threads over on the Serendipity Needleworks website. So again, your your, we'll talk about stranded silks first. So stranded silks, you can, they're divisible. You can use anywhere from one all the way up to all the strands that come. Um, in many cases, that's going to be 12 strands to get the type of coverage you're trying to achieve. You can play around with what uh, gives you the effect that you, that you prefer. So you can use anywhere from one to two for light coverage, all the way up to, you know, I would say, the, probably to get the full coverage on 13 count is going to be um, around eight, eight strands of thread. You probably wouldn't need more than that. You might be able to get away with six to seven. It just depends on the tension that you use. Uh, but some of my really all-time favorites for that are going to be Splendor and uh, uh, Soie d'Alger, Soie Cristal, which was one that I didn't share with you except just briefly to show you the tag. And then some of the overdyes 
in the stranded silk threads are going to be now I do have some of those and this is so Gloriana this is Gloriana comes in a skein and this is Gloriana wrapped around the card that's what I do with all of my threads I wrap them around a card or I uh, if they are um, yeah, if they're not a solid color especially here is water lilies it's a, a strandable silk thread from uh, and it's a, a hand painted one from Karen Collection. So it's not a solid color. It's a multicolor thread. Swa Cristal is the Karen Collection solid color silk thread that's strandable. Um, I mentioned Splendor, which is this one. And then we also have in the, the single strands, we have Trebizond and we have Swa Perle and we have um, and those are the filament silks. And then your spun silk, which is made up of the little bitty short broken pieces of cocoons from silkworms. Um, the spun silks would be um, your pepper pot silk, your planted earth silk, your um, vineyard silk. I have to stop and think a second. Uh, your, your vineyard silk. And then... Um, I'm trying to think, was there anything else that I wanted to mention? No, oh, there are some flat. Um, I, I mentioned when I was talking about filament silks that they, the ones that I mentioned already were the, the Swa Perle and the, and, yeah, and the Trebizond. Those are filament silks that are tightly twisted. There is also, um, you can get filament silk in flat silk. That's really frequently used more in Japanese embroidery and in just surface embroidery. Um, it's very flyaway in most cases. Um, it's It snags very easily. So unless you're a rather accomplished stitcher, um, I would say probably be better to stick with things that like the ones I've already mentioned. And if you've never tried stranded silk thread, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, if you can work with DMC cotton floss, you can work with Splendor. So give it a try. Don't be shy. Um, it's one of those threads that's so, so easy to work with. I love it. It comes in over 300 colors. They are gorgeous colors. And um, if you have never tried it, this is a good place to start. Um, so yeah, if you've never used silk thread at all, maybe you want to start with one of the single strands like Pepper Pot or Planted Earth or um, Vineyard Silk. And if you have tried silk before, but you've never tried stranded silk, then start with Splendor because this is a really good place to start. Okay. Again, thanks ever so much for being here with me. It's always a delight to be able to, to be with you. Um, if you are watching this as a recording, make sure you leave your questions down below. Um, and if you, or let me know too, I forgot to say this. Let me know what your favorite silk thread is. I know we I asked you to do that, but I haven't seen where very many people have done it yet. So I would love to know what your favorite silk thread is. And um, so tell me down in the comments below. Um, if you are uh, happen to think of a question later, come back and ask because I do keep an eye on the comments. Um, and I look forward to seeing you all again next week. We'll be back on our regular schedule next week. We'll be back to Tuesday. This week was just a little crazy. I had a lot of things going on, but we'll be back to Tuesday next week. Thank you for being here. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And I will see you again real soon. Bye for now.